Twice Upon a Caravan. Such an adventurous title sounds a bit like a fairy tale and deserves a bit of explanation. In 1932, the English Douglas Motorcycle Company called my bluff and gave me a motorcycle. They even outfitted it with special fuel tanks and a steel skid plate and a special rack to carry a 35 millimeter motion picture camera to record the year and a half that I spent going around the world 40,000 miles through 20 countries on three continents. In 1937, I even wrote a book about it called One Man Caravan, whence the title of this film, Twice Upon a Caravan. This is essentially a motion picture diary of what I saw in that world of my early 20s. I wonder what I can see in it now that I'm nearly 90. Believe it or not, I still have the same old faithful machine. So climb on this film and share the fun and adventure of it. It may even give us some good ideas about the future. They knew enough to stay ahead of the mud, left it behind for the likes of a man with a strange machine called a motorcycle. My perceptive cameras were teaching me lessons I never dreamed of. To put it graphically, architecture simply became the lens through which to see the people. After all, the bricks and mortar were nothing but a second-hand version of the people, with their flattering interest in me. Or was it just a motorcycle, the likes of which they had never before laid eyes on? To them, it was the modern equivalent of the coolie, and I was just a load on its head. The roads of Turkey had virtually disappeared with their history. Once upon a time, Asia Minor was a green and wonderful plateau, worth conquering and reconquering. The Hittites drove out the Assyrians, pushed by the Egyptians and the Mesopotamians. It was there that Midas turned everything he touched to gold. Motorbiking across Turkey was what I called a very long walk. On its 600 miles, I fell off so many times, I finally had to take a picture of it. I had become an expert. I had a little tripod and a time delay mechanism which stripped the camera shutter. I would set up the motorcycle with its engine running, go and start the 10 second time delay on the camera, run for the bike and ride back into the picture. Crossing the tourist mountains into Syria, I soon found castles built by them, and city walls like Aleppo, meant to keep them out. But the native architecture was still more interesting. Little domed villages dot the landscape, and occasionally one was a gas station. No pumps, mind you, just five gallon cans, and you buy and pay for it all, even if you need only one gallon. On the Syrian side, there were also black markers visible one from another. So the 250 miles to Rutba Wells in the middle of the desert was spanned between that dawn and dark. On the Iraqi side, the signs changed to five kilometer intervals, regardless if in a wadi and out of sight. Elephants are used for all sorts of projects in India. How would you like to have an elephant lead your wedding procession? Here is one ahead of the young groom. And here are two noble Rajput warriors, ready for battle if any emperor tries to steal your beautiful bride. And behold, the rest of your future relatives. The streets of Udaipur were motion picture sets for every sort of activity, basket factories. I was on a journey of exploration not only of the ways of the world, but even more so of myself and my ability to understand those ways. I was looking at everything, but how much was I seeing? To the often asked question of my being homesick, the answer now came that hereafter home would be wherever I then was. And loneliness, I came to realize, it was essentially looking in the mirror and seeing no one there. It was up to me to make something of myself that at least I could see. And this wonderful look at the world was an incredible opportunity to learn how. <laughs>